Hey guys, so for today's video I'm going to be talking about Fedora 28. Now I've got a bit of a soft spot in my heart for Fedora because it's the first distribution I used as my full-time Linux distribution uh, back when it was Fedora Core 6 or 7, so quite some time ago now. And although I've moved away from other distributions, I have uh, dropped in occasionally to see how well it's been doing. And if there's one thing I can say for Fedora is that it's reason well, it's very consistent in that it offers up-to-date packages with a great degree of quality control. I don't think I experienced any uh, bugs or anything like that um, setting up on my laptop. And um, if there were any, they were patched out particularly quickly through the update process, which was uh, very, very convenient and straightforward just as it is with uh, with the Ubuntu based distributions. Now Fedora 28 there's not too much to say about it because with Fedora they're released every six months and generally each, re each release is just a slightly newer and shinier version of the release that came before it um, and it is that reliability it is that consistency that a lot of people find very attractive in Fedora and certainly uh, I could use it as my daily dist uh, driver with no problems whatsoever as I have been doing now although I do say that it would definitely thrive more in the sort of the corporate office space rather than the gaming space it just seems that games do seem to be geared towards Ubuntu and maybe Archie based distributions rather than Fedora but there is still plenty a lot of uh, plenty of gaming on Fedora in fact I'd even tried some of the games in the uh, the gnome app store just for fun and they worked fine so um, and you can install Steam and all that through RP the RPM Fusion uh, repository so the only, um, or the big thing in Fedora 28 that people are talking about is that you can um, you can turn on the RPM Fusion third-party repository um, through the GNOME software store on first use. And um, this just basically allows you to install all your codecs uh, immediately, uh, as you would do with Ubuntu and most other distributions now, rather than a rather strict adherence to free software um, philosophy in the, uh, in the store. And uh, up until now, uh, uh, RPM Fusion had to be um, brought in uh, through the website. Now, uh, I was told by someone ahead of me that it's still worth doing that just for simplicity and regularity sake. They had a, an, an issue with it, so I took their advice and um, and installed it the way that um, in the way that uh, let's see RPM Fusion in the way that they recommend through the uh, configuration. It's very very easy. You just install a couple of packages and you're pretty much good to go, um, and it gives you it for all the recent versions there. But again, I, I've not tried it recently in the uh, in the store there, so um, there you go. But I, it comes with a reasonably standard GNOME desktop, and the GNOME desktop is, um, apart from the fact that they keep slimming it down and, and getting rid of a lot of the features, it is actually quite polished, um, and it actually works quite nicely, and it actually worked quite well on the laptop, which is, you know, it's not particularly the uh, the speediest laptop around, um, and the, the fans hardly ever spun up, really, uh, which is uh, which is generally a good sign. It means that there is a lot of the heavy lifting is done by the uh, the graphics rather than the uh, the CPU itself, uh, which tends to uh, just uh, balance the load a little nicer. I always find, but um, anyway, that aside. Um, yeah, it is just a, it's a very much a standard. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a standard GNOME desktop with the uh, with the GNOME uh, installer here, which is uh, really quite a user friendly installer. Um, you're not going to get much user, you know, easier to use than that. Um, but to be honest, I was just using the command line because the DM DNF command line tool for for managing packages is just a piece of cake. Um, I did have a look at the. Um, the Fedora documentation, the release notes, all this kind of stuff. And I do have to say that there wasn't too much to talk about. I can talk a little bit about the wider GNOME desktop here um, because I found that uh, managing everything here, the sound was great. Um, it was, you know, sounds getting incredibly easy to manage just across Linux distributions in general now. Uh, the notifications, um, easy. You know, all of this was uh, was very easy and quite, you know, just completely regional stuff was a, was a piece of cake. Uh, power, all of this stuff, all done through the um, uh, yeah, d d d done through the settings. Really, uh, it doesn't give you a massive um, amount of um, customizability. But then again, GNOME is is the kind of desktop that uh, that doesn't. Now, I just selected the tweak tool here, 
which, uh, ah, there we go, it's going to take me here. So it's easy enough to install the uh, GNOME tweak tools if that's something that you would like, if there are one or two things that you'd like to change about the GNOME desktop. Uh, although I would say that if you really wanted customization out of a desktop, you're better off looking at other desktop environments. Fedora do great respins, uh, at least in my experience. I haven't tested out any of the respins for 28, but I had a great time on 27 and 26 looking at some of the alternative ones, and they really are well put together. So. Uh, I would say that the, the GNOME desktop comes with sort of simplicity and user friendliness being at the forefront at the expense of, of customization because you can customize a desktop environment like KDE or even nowadays Budgie to your heart's content and, um, and, and GNOME can then sort of focus on the more, you know, the streamlined um, standardized GUI type of uh, uh, workflow that it seems to, to want to drive towards. That being said, I, I, I think that um, getting rid of the notification icons um, is a problem and it did actually cause me some degree of issues uh, when I was uh, using the laptop there. Uh, nothing that was show stopping but definitely something that would make me th reconsider my desktop usage um, in the future. So, you know, um, as much as I do think that the simplicity of GNOME is a beautiful thing, I think you can uh, you can maybe trim a little bit too much fat off to the point where it uh, gives users problems. Okay, so I think that's about everything I've got to say about Fedora uh, 28 there. It's a fantastic distribution from a long line of fantastic distributions. Uh, now, it is released every six months, and it does have quite up-to-date versions of software. Now, it's about as stable as you're going to run these newer software choices, so it's definitely a, comp a competent distribution, a very good distribution in that regard, but it does, re does require a degree of regularity in regards to updating. It doesn't have the longest in terms of support cycles there, but then again, that comes with the, uh, the whole sort of ethos behind the newer software, um, and... Um, and all that. But yes, uh, if it uh, if what you've seen today has uh, tweaked your curiosity, then it's probably worth uh, either spinning up in a virtual machine or checking out the live CD. Certainly a fantastic distribution in my experience, and, um, and I hope we'll see many more to come. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.